Dakota, Sugar Dakota, and later on, just a few months before the actual Bay of Pigs, there were diversionary bombings of the Santiago oil fields in which people died, and also another various little bombings in Havana and also around the island. So you couldn't really feel secure or safe. So, so basically, you were afraid, and um, but you didn't. It was you were not afraid enough for the Bay of Pigs to turn to the Soviet Union. Is that correct? Right? Beforehand, we were just we were afraid of the United States, yes, but we did not turn to the Soviet Union. At that time. Okay. So, but after the Bay of Pigs, you were you became politically affiliated. Is that correct? Right? After the Bay of Pigs, we became have a stronger binding with the Soviet Union. From then on, after the Bay of Pigs, we had a stronger stand with the Soviet Union. So, do you feel that the Bay of Pigs caused you to become uh, affiliated with the Soviet Union and communism? Oh yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, what was your Air Force like at the time of the Bay of Pigs invasion? Uh, pretty embarrassing. It was it was in such sharp shape. At the time of the Bay of Pigs, we only had eight planes and seven pilots. That was the extent of our so-called Air Force. This was in Cuba. This was in Cuba at the time of the invasion. But you did have. Um, were you on order for other planes? Yes. During the time of the Bay of Pigs, we did finally step up our military trading with the Soviet Union. They promised to issue us new war munitions, machine guns, things of that nature. Okay. Um, did you have any advance warning of the of the Bay of Pigs invasion? Um, well, just a few days previously, yeah, the only true advance we might have had would have been the um, B-26 bombing raids on Havana, and also 48 hours beforehand, if you recall, the American bombers dropped flyers similar to the same type of tactics they used for Japan during World War II. Okay, um... Any questions? 
question. I didn't say, did you or did... I didn't say, did you promise? I said, did you or did you not promise? I said, I said, did you ever promise to your country? You mean you knew the answer? I'm showing who's a betrayed... You're not looking for evidence. You're just, you knew, you're trying to... Obviously, you know all the answers to your question. It's obvious that I know the answer before I ask. Because we called the witness. Now listen. First of all, defense, cross-examination, has the opportunity and privilege to lead the witness. Second of all, so far what he's getting at is important to the, so far, testimony. So, objection overruled. All right. All right. Do you believe in the control of government by one political movement? One political movement? One political party. One political party. What you're questioning is, you know what that question is? All right, you want to know? Here's what happened. All right, man. Hey, we like you back. You're all right. Where's the cigar? You stay here. Yeah. Do you believe in the political control of one, the control of government by one political party? Actually, what you're hinting of our so-called one political party was an actual merger of three parties. One was the students' organization, and there were two other movements. One was the 26th of July movement, and there's another. There are three separate organizations. But aren't they all allied under one leadership? No, let me finish, please. Thank you very much. All right. Those three organizations, they gradually, but they were not forced upon in any way, they gradually merged to form one union. All right. I would like to ask in your reign, did you ever persecute any anti-communists? The only people I persecuted were those men of Batista after the revolution, during the Batista trials. Those are the only times we executed people. All right. I would like to ask, then, do you remember receiving a letter from a major, Hubert Matos? No, I don't remember. All right. I'd like to introduce portions of this letter into the record on June 8, 1959. All right. Portion of this letter. I'll show the prosecution. It's more important. That was a summary of what was supposed to be the last one. Yeah, I'm going to read it out. It said, after speaking against communism to you, that person must resign. That's a quote from the letter. And immediately afterwards, did you or have you arrested on charges of tyranny? Like I said, I don't recollect that at all. All right. Well, I'd like to say it's interesting that you don't recollect that since you tried and were on the witness stand for seven hours. Second of all, I'd like to ask, does the government, you have control of the economy? Do you have control of the economy? Objection based on the fact that this was not brought up in our trial. I'm merely establishing this is a communist state of government. The economy was never brought up in our direct examination. But that's one of the intrinsic definitions of communism, that it's a controlled economy. Did you not bring up communism? I said economy. Economy. I'd like to make one more point that the basic difference between a democratic form of government and a communist form of government is that a communist form of government is a controlled economy. A democratic form of government. A lawyer is telling a story. I'm explaining why the objection doesn't apply. Take a seat. Thank you. 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 Do you know of Soviet General Secretary Khrushchev personally? Well, yes, we've met on occasion. And do you share the same ideological view regarding communism? No, mine isn't as harsh or as whatever you would call it. Wait, wait a second. You say economy? Did you say economy? Did I hear economy, anybody? Sit there with his eyes closed. Okay, am I correct in interpreting that before the Bay of Pigs, the only connection you have with the Soviet Union was trade of sugar? That was all. All right. Then I'd like to ask you about did you receive economic aid before the Bay of Pigs from Russia? No, our objection based on the grounds that economic aid from Russia was not a part of the Bay of Pigs. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
record on his uh, products. And uh, I think that the, the fact of the matter is that he did not. Objection. Uh, Objection. This is, this is narration as well. We never brought up uh, communism due to sugar products. You said, you, said that, you said that he was forced into... Due to basics. Listen. Castro said that he was forced into um, take, uh, buying sugar from the Soviet Union because the United States put a sugar coat on him before the Bay of Pigs. In February, Castro bought arms and sugar and signed a political and uh, economic pact with the Soviet Union prior to September of 1960 when the United States put a sugar quota on because he was falling into communism. I want to bring that point out and keep it for the record. Well, that was an objection. I would like that stricken for the record based on the fact this is narration. Oh, damn. It's narration. Wait. That was complete narration. It had nothing to do with yes. any questions asked. You just thought and made facts in order to deal with the judge. You're sustaining that on the grounds that it was not brought up. By the All right, that, I don't have a question. Oh, let's just say that you, you do have the opportunity to uh, question, uh, question the witness. Um, only, I mean, uh, nothing has to deal with the economics like that. Only, like, directly related to the communism. Now, if you can work that in with directly related to the communism, then, then right. we'll, we'll what I'm saying is, you're going to mention the economy from like that. You already uh, sustained. Yeah, the other, other questions, but merely establishing, they're saying that there was no link between the Soviet Union and Cuba. Economic aid from one country to another, Absolutely. it shows a vital link. Well, say it was I'm merely asking the question of, of whether or not there was economic aid, which would show a link between the Soviet Union and Cuba. They were saying there wasn't, so this is a rebuttal to their examination. It's not new, it's not new evidence. Objection. He said that we did say it was an economic um, relationship. We just said there was no political relationship. No, I'm saying economic aid as in giving money, not just trading sugar. I'm saying was there direct giving of money? We never brought that up. We just brought up the trade of sugar. We did not bring up. Right, but you said it was only the trade of sugar. There we did. We asked, was there, was there political? Yes, you did. I'd like to ask that the record be come to a television set then, so we can show that it was brought up. Not right now. This is merely a response to them saying that it was only sugar, and that's what he no, said. No, we did Castro said we were related economically, such as with sugar. No, he said only sugar. Such as with sugar. As long as you do not use economics in your phrase, you can restate the question. All right. Did you receive foreign aid from the Soviet Union? We only received foreign aid during the Bay of Pigs invasion and afterwards. No time prior at all. all right, I'd like to have this entered in the record that in February of 1960, before the Bay of Pigs, Soviet Premier Anas Mikoyan visited Cuba where he and Castro signed a commercial and political agreement under which the Soviet Union would purchase 5 million tons of sugar over a 5 year period oh. and, and Cuba would receive a $100 million credit um, at 2.5% interest like over the 5 year period. Thus, for the 1961 1964 period, the Soviets offered the $100 million credit at 61, which is the same year as the Bay of Pigs. But no, it's early 1960. February. February. That was agreed upon, but we never received anything prior. Mr. Madden. I would like to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But didn't you sign the pact before the Bay of Pigs? Whether you received money, did you or did you not sign the pact before the Bay of Pigs? Yeah, just before. February of 1960, it's one year, it's over a year before. Yeah, but when I'm saying it, we didn't receive anything until after. Objection, this was a trade agreement. The credit. The, the credit was for sugar. It's it's all a buying thing. It's not aid. It's credit that they give to uh, get it. It's not like here, take this hundred uh, million dollars or whatever much it is. And then I'll show it to you right now. Listen, um, hold on a second. Would you care to present your? Uh, uh, would you care to well, the interest is two and a half percent, which is which is so which is basically assures that it's by it's economic aid. It's not. You're saying credits, but credits at two and a half percent interest is economic aid because interest rates are way above that internationally. Yes, but how much in nations usually uh, interest rate is set lower? A lying nation still. And second of all, have you have you uh, an answer? Uh, I'll introduce that this time. Um, <coughs> all right. Just, 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 um, please um, uh, restate.
restate your grounds of objection? For uh, what he said about this question. Right. Yeah. What was your objection? What about the analogy? Our objection was that they were... Well, wrong. <laughs> 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 Whether that's uh, grounds for objection, I really don't know. I withdraw my objection. Would you care to answer this question? It is in, yes. Are you bringing up uh, That's a form of economic uh, aid. I'm not establishing that as a trade agreement. That's what we, we said. Yeah, what do you mean? Um, yeah, the other, the what's the other box? Yeah, what's the other box?
Are we answer that it was eight MIGs instead of eighty MIGs, eighty anti aircraft guns. It's not an aircraft. Yeah, but there's eight MIGs and there's ten Soviet helicopters. Hey Mike, they didn't reduce the point, so it doesn't matter. They did, you said I had eight MIGs and I had eight. No, we need no, we're not talking about that. Before I mentioned the uh, numerous, the 93,000 automatic rifles, and etc. 